back, ladies and gentlemen, to the last section of Chapter 1. You guys have done an awesome job, and you are well on your way to becoming college accounting scholars. But the last section does a good job of summarizing all the information that we've talked about thus far. The area we're going to cover is called ratio analysis. Ratio analysis is extremely important, uh, again, because they, ratios represent tools that investors and business owners can use to determine how good their business is running and what type of business uh, an individual has and, and how much worth it has. So ratios basically measure four areas, liquidity, leverage, activity, and profitability. Liquidity ratios are important because they relate to a firm's ability to essentially to pay its bills. Uh, can it pay its bills on time? Leverage uh, ratios basically refer to those particular those particular areas where you're concerned about how much debt, how many loans a business has, and how does that relate to the assets that it has. And you know, as as like an individual, uh, you don't want to have too much debt. Activity ratios relate to how well assets are being used. You know, if you purchase a computer for your company, are you using it? Are you getting the full benefit from it? And profitability basically measure how the company is doing from an income standpoint. What kind of return is the business getting? So let's uh, let's take some examples of some very important ratios. The first one is a called the current ratio, which is a liquidity ratio, which basically means what is the ability of the business to pay its bills. And this is measured by looking at current assets from the balance sheet and current liabilities from the balance sheet. A second very important is ratio is return on sales. And again, this is a profitability ratio to determine, you know, our are the investors and owners getting a reasonable return for their investment? And so this particular one looks at net income uh, as it relates to the sales that are generated. And the third one we're going to be looking at is the debt to equity ratio. And this is a leverage ratio, and by leverage meaning uh, how much debt does the business actually contain? You know, is it is it a a reasonable proportion for what you would uh, expect in order to run the business? So the formulas for this are reasonably straightforward. Uh, current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities, and remember, current assets. The term current means um, in an asset category is any asset on the balance sheet that essentially can be turned into cash within less than 12 months. And the same thing with current liabilities, it's things that you would need to pay or obligations that you have that need to be taken care of in less than 12 months. Return on sales ratio is essentially net income divided by sales. And the third one, debt to equity, equity is, represents uh, ownership, is total liabilities, again this comes from the balance sheet, divided by owner's equity. So let's, uh, let's see if we can actually compute uh, some of these ratios based on the information below. Uh, we have accounts payable at 136, cash at 2,211, cost of goods sold at 8,192, and so on and so forth. So let's be the first step here if we're going to compute one of these ratios and let's uh, let's start with the current ratio which equals current assets divided by current liabilities 
If we look at the list that was on the previous slide, the first thing that would be done is identify the current assets. And as you can see here, I've, I've uh, bolded the current assets in the list. Cash is a current asset. Um, accounts receivable is a current asset. And inventory is a current asset. Those are three accounts that all can be turned into cash in less than 12 months. Okay, let's see what the current liabilities would look like. So current liabilities are things you have to pay in 12 months or less. So in a current liability from the balance sheet would be accounts payable at 136. As we move down the line, um, miscellaneous payables would be another current liability. And that would pretty much account for your current liabilities. A long-term bank loan is a, uh, is a liability, but that is, is a long-term liability. So let's see what the math looks like here. So the current ratio would be uh, your current assets of 876, 908, and 2,211 divided by your current liabilities of 136 and 529. That equals 6.01 to 1. So reasonably straightforward. Let's look at the return on sales ratio, which is net income divided by sales. Now, in this particular case, we have to identify those accounts that would appear on the income statement. Cost of goods sold would be one of them, which is highlighted in red here. Uh, your operating expenses would be appear on your income statement, which is highlighted here. And obviously, your sales. Now, this particular ratio says net income divided by sales. Well, where is net income? Well, on the bottom right corner, you see that I've actually given you a little hint here. Income equals sales minus expenses. So income in this case has to be computed. So if we take sales of 13,353 and minus subtract that from the cost of goods sold and the operating expenses, we come up with $275. Now we have all our information necessary to compute our return on sales ratio, which is 275 divided by 13353, or 2.06%. All right, now last but not least is the debt to equity ratio, which is total liability divided by total, total owner's equity. Now, Total liabilities now includes current liabilities, those liabilities that have to be taken care of or paid for in less than 12 months, as well as long-term liabilities. So we identified current liabilities previously, and those are highlighted, bolded, bolded in red here. But now we have to add to those the long-term liabilities that would appear on the balance sheet, which is the long-term bank loan, which is $700. $16. Now that's going to be divided by total owner's equity. And total owner, owner's equity has been identified in green here. Owner's equity would include retained earnings, which is 373, and common stock, which is 3827. So here again, if we do the math, uh, we have debt to equity ratio of uh, 1. 36 plus 716 plus 529 divided by the owner's equity portion, uh, which would be 3827 plus 373. So your ratio is 0.3321. Great job, guys. We have completed the videos associated with Chapter 1. You are now ready to take 